G'day kids, thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now today is pretty exciting and a little bit different because we are having a chat on the internet and not in person. And that's because Ozzy is in lockdown because of that pesky COVID. But what's great about it is that today we're going to talk to a Paralympian called Ella Sabeljack. Now Ella is a wheelchair basketball player for Australia as part of the Gliders. She's also a teacher and a wonderful role model for all kids and she has some very important messages to share with you all. I'm super keen to share this chat. So come on, let's meet Ella. G'day Ella, Ozzy here, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? I'm doing well, all the better for getting the opportunity to speak to you. So I just wanna say a massive thank you for fitting us into your, no doubt, very busy schedule before you head off to the Paralympics. Yeah, pretty exciting. Thank you for having me on. Thank you so much. So for the kids out there that don't know you, Ella, you are a wheelchair basketballer and you play for Australia as part of the Gliders, our women's Paralympic wheelchair basketball team. Now wheelchair basketball, it's I've seen a little bit of it. It's a super fast game and it can be pretty rough, but there's probably a lot of kids that haven't had the opportunity to see it before. Now we have some little fans out there and, and one of them sent a question in. So I think it's a perfect time to start right now with a question, and this one is from Addison. She's five, and she's from Sydney, and she simply says, how do you play basketball in a wheelchair, and what are the rules? Oh, what a great question. So yeah. playing basketball in a wheelchair is very similar to playing basketball standing up. So you'd like to think of your wheelchair as just another part of your body. So when you're sitting in the chair, you've got your wheels on the side, and you've just got to push the chair, you put the ball on your lap if you can, um, and you've got two touches of your wheels before you need to bounce it, pass it, or shoot it. So otherwise it will be a trouble. Um, and yeah, it's a team sport, so we use a lot of our, um, our teammates to help us along the way. As I mentioned, it does get a little bit rough. Does it, does it get a bit scary playing? Sometimes, I get hit in the head quite a bit, and I don't know if it's because I'm at that height where the ball just finds my head, um, <laughs> bumps every now and then. Um, but in terms of injuries, we don't we take care of ourselves really well. So we do a lot of um, shoulder rehabs. We take care of our shoulders, a lot of um, stretching. So then we don't end up with any injuries. Um, if we collide with with another chair, so sometimes when we're going super fast and we have a bit of a collision. We, we learn how to sort of fall and we, you know, we duck our shoulder so we don't hit the ground really hard and, um, and bump our heads. So we learn all these things along the way and we practice it so that if it happens, we know what to do. Yeah, definitely. You want to be prepared. It's like anything in life, right? You, you need to practice and, and be prepared. Now, where did your journey start in wheelchair basketball? How old were you and how did you get into it? Oh, my journey started back when I think I was in grade two. I was really itching to play a sport and I couldn't run um, that well with my friends. So I always felt like I was left out. They were always running off and playing on the playground or playing footy on the oval. Um, so my mum found a sport that I could play and that was super inclusive, which was wheelchair basketball. And I was a little bit too young, I think, at the time to really take it on. So I, I think I just loved being around other people with disabilities as well, playing sport at a high level um, because it showed me that I could achieve something and I could get somewhere with sport. But I then didn't go back to wheelchair sports until I was about 16. 
I did wheelchair racing, which okay. is you've got the, the bucket chair and then the big long um, pole and the one wheel at the front. Right. We go round and round the athletics track and I found that so boring because all I wanted to do was talk to my <laughs> talk to my friends that I was training with and couldn't because you were just by yourself training and then I found another program that was a local program that they had wheelchair basketball so I could jump on in and be back with my teammates again. That's great. Um, there's something about playing a team sport isn't there that um, just makes it a little bit more enjoyable having you know a, a crowd of people around you to encourage you and to to learn from and to push you to be better. Yeah absolutely I think as well if you're having like a really bad day and you don't want to get up and go to sport or do anything um you've got your teammates there to push you and to lean on and they'll help you they'll bring you they'll bring you up with them yeah that's great what would you say to to young kids out there that are interested in potentially trying wheelchair basketball oh give it a go jump in a chair every every person that's jumped in a chair who's never played wheelchair sport before or is completely able-bodied um, they jump in a chair and they love it. Their first thing that they say is, oh, it's not as easy as it looks. Because a bit of coordination and bouncing and pushing a chair, shooting. Yeah, I have no doubt. I, I actually don't think it looks easy. So um, I take my hat off to everyone that is able to play wheelchair basketball. Now you mentioned there are, you know, able-bodied people. Can, can able-bodied people um, play wheelchair basketball? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, we allow anybody to come and play wheelchair basketball. Um, we often find that kids who have a disability, their siblings will come and jump in as well and it becomes a real family um, and a community sport. And yeah, no one gets left behind. So if you want to jump in a chair, jump in a chair. That's awesome, all inclusive. Now whereabouts um, can kids try it? So in every major city in Australia. We have um, a wheelchair basketball hub. So in Brisbane, there's, um, we have a local competition in Brisbane. There's some um, in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide's just starting up. Um, and in Darwin, they have a great program up in Darwin. That's excellent. Well, hopefully through our chat today and through the upcoming Paralympics, we can inspire some young kids to give it a try. And who knows, they may be, you know, part of the, the gliders uh, or the rollers in the future, potentially at Brisbane 2032 or, or any kind of Paralympic sport, wheelchair sport. You know, it's, it's exciting to be able to inspire kids. It is. It's exciting. Yeah, it certainly is. So how long have you actually been playing for now? So I've been playing in the Australian squad for about 10 years. Wow. So been 10 years since my first international tour with the Australian squad and leading up to my first Paralympic Games. It's been a journey. Yeah, that's quite the journey. Nothing comes easy though. That's what we, we always say as well. Everything that's worth doing is worth doing with all of your heart and, and just staying keen and, and focusing on achieving your goals. Now, it must be very satisfying for you to be selected to play for Australia in the Olympics, in the Paralympics. Um, I know that wheelchair basketball hasn't been, you haven't made it as a team in the Paralympics for a couple of Paralympics. So it must be pretty exciting to be part of it. Yeah, so our team, our last Paralympic games were London in 2012. And then in 2015, we failed to qualify for the 2016 Rio Paralympic games. Yep. So we missed out on one spot. We had one spot for our zone and we missed out on we lost the gold medal game to get into the paralympic games so yeah it's the way sport goes sometimes it's heartbreaking but we don't give up we keep going and on to the, there's always going to be another another tournament or another opportunity so just keep going yeah it's important that we don't just give up on our on our goals and our dreams and we just keep working hard um, but you have been part of the Australian team for quite a while now. So no doubt there's there's other huge highlights in your career. What has been the highlight so far? Oh, 
many highlights. Um, uh, with our under 25 women's team, we've won two silver medals. So our first one was in Canada in 2011. And then our second silver medal was in China in 2015. And they were pretty special. Another memorable one would be qualifying for the Paralympic Games. It was like, as soon as we won our game, we looked up at the scoreboard and we're like, we've done it. That's great. And was it a was it a feeling of, of accomplishment or is it just one uh, tick in the box on the way to uh, to more success that you hope to achieve in the Paralympic Games? Yeah, absolutely. It was maybe a little bit of both, a little yeah. bit of we had the a little bit of you know unsure we were unsure about whether we would do it or not because in the past we didn't um get through so yeah. there was a little bit of you know animosity are we going through are we not but when it came to it when it came game time we were ready and we wanted it and so we went out and got it good on you we have one more little uh, question from a little fan this is chelsea she's eight and she's from sydney and she said how often do you need to train to get a place on the Australian Olympic team? Oh, <laughs> oh lots, <laughs> lots and lots of practice. So we train when we're in our full training mode, we train every day, twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Wow. We may have one or two days off here and there. That's a lot of training. Yeah, and that's on court. So we're in our basketball chairs on the basketball court and then also in the gym. Amazing. So has it been a dream of yours for a long time to be in the Paralympics? Can you remember at what age you said, I'm going to be a Paralympian? And do you remember what it was that inspired you? Oh, I think growing up with a disability, I've always looked up to the Paralympic Games as the pinnacle of what we can achieve and where we want to get to. So I think I remember being in grade four, maybe when the Sydney Olymp the Paralympics were on, I did a an assignment on Louise Savage. I'm like, I want to be like her. I want to be racing and I want to win and I want to go really fast. Um, and yeah, just seeing all these other women in the Olympics and in the Paralympics, just go out there and break down barriers and win gold medals. I think that that really sparked something in me to say, you know what, I can do it and I'm going to go give it a good crack. Yeah, that's great. And you were influenced by um, possibly one of the greatest Paralympians of, of, that Australia's ever produced in Louise Savage. And if the kids out there watching don't know her, then I'd definitely encourage them to go out and check out what she's achieved and what she's done uh, as an athlete and as um, off off the athletics track as well, because she's an, an incredible lady. Yeah, absolutely. She does heaps of coaching now, and she's she's brilliant. I've played basketball against her as well, and I remember when I played basketball against her, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Louise Savage. And um, I don't know if she knows that I did an assignment on her, but she probably does now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so massive inspiration. That's great. And I've no doubt that there are lots of kids out there that look up to you the way you looked up to Louis Savage. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you for inspiring the next generation. It's, um, it's simply amazing what you, what you have achieved and what you're about to achieve at the Paralympics. Thank you. What, uh, what is it about uh, Tokyo that you're most looking forward to? Oh, competing again, I think. Yeah. We haven't competed internationally since 2019 so it's been a while um just want to get out there and play basketball yeah great are you a bit of a basketball tragic did you watch the boomers uh in the olympics and and if so which i'm sure you did as, as most of australia did um how are you going to draw from that kind of inspiration of them winning the bronze medal but but the way they went about it the the passion and teamwork and um, the whole story behind their success. How, how does that drive you? Um, oh, in I your goosebumps thinking about yeah. that. Um, <laughs> I think the boomers are really, their culture is so brilliant. It just, they live and breathe everything that they 
um, say and they do. And so it's not the on-court stuff, it's all of the off-court behaviours and the trust that they have in each other and the willingness to do the extra 10, you know, 15 percenters and go out there and you're not playing for you, you're playing for your, the people next to you and you're playing for the people at home and it's not about me and it's not about what I'm doing, it's about doing it for everybody else because that brings me so much joy knowing that what we're doing is helping other people and so I'm not doing it for me I'm doing it for you know everyone at home and my teammates and coaches and everyone alongside me the whole Paralympic team so yeah that's definitely like what the boomers are about and I love that and I bring it in with everything that I do and I like to study teams and what makes them successful and try and bring it into our team to make us successful and yeah yeah it's great um that's what the i think the boomers have, have been able to do so well is um inspire a nation uh with just the way they go about things um and it's fantastic that you're drawing from that to to feed into hopefully your success at the the paralympics so uh, I wish you all the best with that. Looking forward at uh, 2032, uh, we have the exciting opportunity to host the Paralympics in Brisbane. Now, I know that we have the opportunity to include new sports potentially. So what sports would you like to see included in the Paralympic Games? Oh, um, surfing. I think surfing would be really cool if we could have um, like para surfing, especially in Brisbane. like. We've got beautiful beaches and our coastline is wonderful. I like it. Now, Ella, you seem like a very happy, very passionate person. What? When do you feel most happy? Oh, probably when I'm at the beach with my dog and my partner having a coffee. Simple nice. things in life make me really happy. Nice. Now, speaking of your partner, I believe he's a very uh, successful wheelchair basketballer himself. Yes, he is. He um, so he plays for the Rollers, and there he was in Rio uh, in 2016, and they came sixth. I'm pretty sure, but from his journey, they've just been building and building in like an upward um, direction. So in our World Championships, they came third, so they got a bronze medal, and um, yeah, they're looking to better that this time around in Tokyo. That's great. Now, for the kids out there that don't know, what's his name so that we can all look out for him when he uh, takes the court for Australia? Matt McShane, also known as Macca. Macca champion, champion of the Australian team, the Rollers. Absolutely. Now, very important question, who's the better wheelchair basketballer? Oh. Well, if you asked me yesterday, I would have said him, but this morning I did take him to the rack a few times. That's so, what I like to hear. It's whoever shows up on the day. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I love it. Now, Ella, we're going to do uh, a series of questions, Aussie's keen questions. Very quick fire questions and quick answers. Okay, okay. so. Ready. Veg Vegemite or peanut butter? Vegemite. Would you prefer be able to fly or to be invisible? Oh, maybe be invisible because then we could get on flights and not have to pay. Uh, pet dinosaur or pet dragon? Oh, dragon. Nice. Would you rather live without a TV or without a phone? TV. <laughs> nice. Now Milo, hot or cold? Oh, both. Nice. There's nothing wrong with having both. No. Not at the same time, obviously, but cold for the summer, hot for the winter months. Yeah. Not that there's much cold weather up in Queensland. Oh, we get about a week in the middle of the year. So you get a week of hot milos. Nice. Yeah. Uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. Cool. Rice bubbles or wheat bix? Rice bubbles. Rice bubbles. Now, how do you have your rice bubbles? Just plain with milk? Play with milk. Nice. Keep it simple. Don't need to add anything to the rice bubbles. No. Before we go, before I let you go, 
I want to ask you one final question, Ella. Our motto, Aussie's motto, and our favourite saying is stay keen. And that's what I try and teach all the kids uh, to try lots of different things, find what it is that you love. And if you set your sights on something and you really, really want to achieve it and you just stay keen, you can get there. So Ella, how do you stay keen? Oh, I love challenging myself challenging and making things different all the time because if it's always the same you're not going to want to do it so change it up challenge yourself and that way I think you'll stay keen I love it it's perfect simple message for the kids out there I've no doubt you've inspired so many uh, and I wish you all the very best in the Paralympics um, which is coming up very soon I can't wait to watch you on the big screen I'll be cheering I reckon you'll hear me I'll be cheering that loud and I'm sure the whole of Australia will be behind you. So, Ella, thank you so much. Good luck and stay thank keen. You. Thank you. If you haven't already, make sure you get a great up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon, kids. And until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right. Stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 Aussie,